Hi, and welcome to Bearhawk Studio, where we just finished this Adirondack chair for a customer they're gonna give as a Christmas gift, and I thought I'd share with you the process. This is the first of two of these chairs, and I documented the first build, uh, and we'll talk through it about how you could build one in an afternoon in your own shop. I started this project by modeling the chair in Fusion 360. This helped me to build a cut list and to calculate materials and angles. Hopped in the truck, made a quick trip to the big box store, and I'm ready to get to work. I start by cutting the base of the chair. Be mindful during this step of any imperfections in the wood. Plan your cuts around what will make the outside faces of the finished chair look the absolute best. After finishing the pre-cuts for the base, I go ahead and cut all the cedar as well. Treated lumber and the chemicals inside are pretty hard on metal, so I don't want that sitting around on all my tools if I can help it. Next, I lay out and mark all the angles where the pieces of the base will connect. I use the side of my table as the floor because I've already verified it's a straight edge. Even though these inside joints won't be visible, resist the urge to just put deck screws in all willy-nilly. It just takes a few extra seconds to pre-drill all the holes with a countersink bit so that they're nice and tidy. Once you've verified all the angles and got everything marked up, go ahead and assemble the two sides of the chair with your two and a half inch deck screws. Bada bing. Bada boom. Bada bing bing boom. And now we can attach the front and back braces. The front is the easiest since it's just straight across and will provide stability as we get the angle on the back brace marked and pre-drilled. I marked the bottom brace position by placing one of the cedar backing boards flush against the back brace and drawing a line where it crossed the side brace. Then I just wedge the bottom brace in, drill the countersink holes, and secure it with deck screws. Now it's time to rip the six inch cedar boards that we pre-cut to length earlier into the two and a half inch wide strips we'll need to make the back and seat of the chair. Notice that there are different colors of cedar depending on which board these were ripped from. If you just threw this together, you may not notice until you get the chair assembled, but it would look off somehow. Since the back is the focal point of the chair, take a minute now to try and find the most attractive layout both in wood grain and in symmetry. I use this scrap 2x4 and the straight edge of the table to make sure the back slats are all even before I use the compass to draw the arch for the back. If you're making more than one chair for the same people, I suggest making sure and lock that compass or document the angle you're at so you can save time later and ensure they all have the same arch. And if you think they won't notice that the arches are different, I can assure you that everyone who steps into their yard for the life of these chairs will say, your chairs are crooked, so save yourself and your customer that embarrassment and plan ahead. I typically use the bandsaw to cut the arch, but you can also clamp it down just like you had it on the table and use a jigsaw. The best tool for this job is the one you already have. The second best tool is the one you can use this job to justify purchasing. Next, we'll use the router table to give all the human touching surfaces a nice rounded edge. As we mentioned earlier, the seat back is the focal point of this chair, so you don't want to skimp anywhere here. Take your time and draw straight lines across the back and then pre-drill countersink holes to make sure that they all line up and don't look like a cartoon Tommy Gun drive-by. And while you're at it, go ahead and do the same thing for both sides of the seat slats. It'll look better, but it'll also have the added benefit of helping to prevent the wood from splitting when you put the screws in. Most of the time. Now you're ready to attach the seat slats. 
I like to start with the back and only do the bottom screw at first so it's flexible. I also use a quarter inch spacer from a super handy set of spacers I bought on Amazon, but you could just cut one from scrap. Either way, I highly recommend the use of a spacer because it makes this part really quick and easy. Since the bottom is only secured with one screw and is still flexible, I can use that same spacer up here to ensure that it's consistent across and we get those nice straight lines. Now we use that same method on the bottom and in just a few minutes we've got a stunning symmetrical cedar seat. At this point in the day I didn't realize but the battery in my lapel mic died so no audio here on out. But hey it's my second video cut a dust a break. I'll get better at this. I usually hand draw the first armrest for any set of chairs and then trace them on the rest but slowing down to make this video and analyzing each step made me realize that I probably need to build templates for this going forward. But for the sake of this build, I drew the first one by hand and then cut it out here on the bandsaw, then reversed it and traced it onto the other side and then cut that on the bandsaw. Then moved over to the sander to clean everything up and round off the edges to make a nice clean look. Once the curves were sanded down on both armrests, I moved back over to the router to give those edges a nice round over. Once everything was rounded off and sanded, I lined it up on the posts, pre-drilled my holes, and then using decking screws, I attached it. Now here, I like to use a little bit longer decking screw, even though I didn't mention that in the materials list, because for the life of these chairs, everyone is going to pick them up by those armrests. And I just like to have that little extra bit of insurance knowing that I used a really long screw and that it's unlikely it's going to rip out. Now we'll cut a spreader to connect all the back slats together and keep them straight and supported. I cut this just shy of the width of the back, line it up with the center of each slat and pre-drill countersink holes. This board provides the support for the force of a person sitting back into the chair, but also prevents the natural warping in the sun these would do over the years without it. If you're using 1 and 5 8 inch screws here, this will be near exactly the depth, so don't hammer down on that drill or you'll leave little points sticking out on the other side. You can avoid this entirely by using 1 and a quarter inch screws. Using cutoffs from the base, I cut a couple 45 degree angles and pre-drilled holes using the drill press. These will support the armrests from downward pressure. Be sure to choose screws here that won't poke through on the other side. The 1 and 5 8 inch deck screws worked fine for this. I always ask if the client is right handed or left handed because one detail people love is having a dedicated cup holder built into the chair. The inserts are inexpensive, and it just takes a few extra minutes, but provides a ton of value. The last thing I always add is some kind of backing plate. For these chairs, the customer wanted their names, but sometimes a customer will want their favorite sports team or a picture of the state. But either way, it adds a level of personalization that really makes the chair theirs. And that's our finished chair. Beautiful, comfortable, and built to last. Thanks for watching our one day Adirondack chair build. I hope you learned something, but more importantly, I hope it's given you the confidence to get out and build something yourself, whether it's this chair or something else.